my uncle abhay charan de uh, from his very childhood he was visiting a temple in thorn of his residence and uh, there he was uh, worshiping radha gobindo and plucking flowers preparing garlands for krishna um, and uh, those garlands were given to krishna in the temple itself and uh, so he developed <coughs> this consciousness for krishna uh, i should say from his very childhood and where he was reading in college uh, when he was a student he was reading these vaishnav books at that time it was in bengali and he was picking up i mean ideas and the philosophy uh, and um, of it so whenever he um, started his career that is uh, he became a chemist in kesi bose laboratory uh, for some time he worked there but he did not pull well with them for long and they left the business and went to alabad yeah. there he It's started a big pharmacy and um, he, st- uh, he tried to i mean he produced his own medicines injections and uh, like that and which are um, which also became very popular in the market he was all the time worshiping god separately in his house and uh, reading vaishnava literature and all that so gradually um, these all these things developed so much in his mind that he went to gaudiamot uh, talked with his gurudev saraswati maharaj and he gave him mantra that he was a right disciple so and we came he discussed so many things about philosophy and all that <clears throat> he wanted to make it be the business bigger and he started a bonded laboratory in lucknow uh, by investing all his i mean savings and money um, but continued for some time he was short of funds and uh, without getting any help from anybody ultimately he had to wound up that uh, laboratory business and whatever he could get by selling that bonded laboratory he came back to calcutta there he also started his own business and produced some medicines injections and like that at that time he called me to join his business so i went to him and was working uh, in accounts stock and other the correspondence like that so but at that time he was writing back to god it so um, most of his time he devoted in writing back to god it and he was publishing all alone uh then he was visiting his uh, gurudev in gaudiamot saraswati maharaj and there his preceptor always told him he used to go to him and give a copy of his back to godhead so his preceptor used to go to tell him that uh, why don't you go and uh, i mean preach our vaishnavism uh, uh, and krishna consciousness in some foreign country i bless you my child you will be successful so he he kept this his blessings all the time in his mind and was thinking of how to uh, fulfill his mission so after some time uh, he sold his business in calcutta and with that money he uh, celebrated his daughter's marriage so after that he didn't want to proceed further in business he went to bombay and there with the help of some businessmen uh, he 
his mission was fulfilled and he went to america he came to my press for uh, getting the magazine printed back to godhead i found him to be a nice person and i accepted the printing of the magazine during the course of the printing i found that uh, it was quite difficult for him to get it printed because he had to organize paper and uh, the payment of printing bills that we had and by and large i found that it was uh, not very easy for him to collect money and uh, as i learned he was a pauper he would come to the press uh, practically every day during the days the printing was on and after the printing was done he would do everything himself means uh, for the posting of the paper i found that uh, the paper he would collect from the parties would bring it in rickshaw he himself for his own use i never saw him coming in a rickshaw even in uh, winter months when the winter was too severe i found that he had uh, no chadar on him just a cotton jacket and a hat sort of thing which would cover his uh, ears and you could tie it round his chin he was a very nice person during the course of uh, proof reading when the proofs were being read for us together he would sit with me across uh, the table and we would be discussing on many subjects i found he was a very religious man of course i could never imagine that a organization like that that is running now he would ever be behind him and or he, he would ever be able to run an organization or create an organization like that but he was a dedicated person a very committed person and uh, at the times when he was not in a position to pay the bills i would ask him why are you running this why don't you stop it he would say no it is my mission and one day swender kumar you will see that i will succeed in my mission i found he was an elderly man and whether he could at all uh, reach that stage but uh, to my astonishment with his uh, dedication and uh, strong commitment he has of course reached to that stage and uh, the organization that you are running today is a proof of it during the days he would come to the press i know because of uh, the no money with him he would not even have the breakfast in the morning but his dedication to print the uh, paper was such that he would in any case come i would ask him swami ji did you have uh, the breakfast he would say no sir no quite that is not important but uh, printing this paper is more important and i must see that uh, this is uh, out in time and uh, i would get breakfast for him and it would be usually like that i knew that uh, he would be coming and uh, maybe he's not having the breakfast so i would always ask for breakfast for him he would have it there and uh, it was the relationship of more of a friend than of a customer that i had with him because he was a pious man he was a good man i always had uh, liking for him and we would sit together and talk for hours together on certain subjects while i was having discussions with him during the course of his uh, visit to my place i asked him as to why he was continuing with this he said it's a commitment for me and uh, i am of a uh, firm opinion a firm belief that the peace can come to people through the teachings of gita he would talk to me on any subject means he was a learned man and he was able to talk for hours together on any subject but he always wanted to talk more on gita and its teachings because it was his firm belief that uh, peace can come to humanity through the teachings of gita and that's why even with great difficulties he continued with his uh, magazine back to godhead when first prabhupad came here he was waiting outside i was very busy and choksi when i went out told me that this gentleman i said who is this gentleman sitting here so he said that this man has been waiting here for 5 hours he wants to wanted to meet me i said all right i'll come and i had a talk with him i said swami ji what can i do for you he said i want to print this bhagavat and i want you to help me i saw the manuscript and told him that will you please come tomorrow so we can go and see the whole thing in detail so he came next day 
and we, I agreed that all right, we will print this book. Then he had no place to stay, so I made arrangement at our Andheri colony that he should stay there, and he had somebody with him who will cook for him. He used to come to my house, and I wanted him, uh, wanted to hear Bhagavad from him. And he used to come every evening. And one day he said that he would like to go to uh, America. I was surprised. I said, Swamiji, don't go there. You are too old to go, and it will be too cold for you. Still he insisted. So I said, all right, you get your P form, and I will make an arrangement to send you by our ship. So he got the P form after some months and came. So I made arrangement for him to go by Jaladuta. She, he went, we sent him to Calcutta, bought all the warm clothing for him, sent him, and he stayed on board the ship. And then he sailed to go from Calcutta to New York. And I made it everything uh, uh, certain that the captain of the ship must be a vegetarian uh, man who can know what is vegetarian. And he was a Brahmin, I'm glad that he looked after Swamiji because his wife was also there and uh, looked after him very well. And after reaching America, he wrote to me also. On way, while he was on passing through Suez, after that, the Gokulashtami was there. That day was Lord Krishna's birthday. And he gathered all the people on board the ship, all the crew members, officers, and recited some shloka, and then some prasad was distributed to them, and they had aratikam arat and all that. And he wrote to me from there also. I am glad that he made a great success, and uh, I pray that it might continue the path that he has led for everyone. In uh, 1971, when Srila Prabhupada came back to India, with this first group of American devotees. Um, he came to a place very near our family house and uh, my mother invited Srila Prabhupada along with all the devotees for Prasad and Kirtan. Uh, my mother had always been very fond of Kirtans. <coughs> and um, at that time I used to follow this uh, impersonalist or Mayavad philosophy. Uh, I had been reading a lot of our ancient books from the age of 12, but most of them were written by impersonalists who don't accept God as a, uh, having any form. They believe that God is a word or God is energy or God is formless. Some of them believe in voidism. So it was Prabhupada with his, I would say, full of energy which he had, particularly love of God. He was able to explain who God was, what God's forms are, what his qualities are, what his paraphernalia associates are. And this came as a surprise to me because I thought that God was formless, right? So um, I used to argue from whatever little knowledge I had on this subject and I soon found out that he was far more scholarly than anyone I had ever met. He had far more knowledge and the knowledge attracted me first because Prabhupada was the person who uh, was able to convince any, I, I have not seen him being defeated by anyone. He was able to defeat any impersonalist who believed in uh, this uh, Mayavad philosophy. Prabhupada also, as I noticed, was um, overflowing with this uh, love of God which he was freely distributing. Now you know in the Christian religion or the Muslim religion or any religion, uh, you will find that the ultimate aim is that the prophet says or the son of God says Lord Jesus Christ that love God that is the real final instruction but how does one love God who is God all this had to be explained and that was explained beautifully by Prabhupada um, 
I recall Prabhupada uh, telling me that uh, God has two hands, he has eyes, just, but these eyes are not like our eyes, they are transcendental, all his features are transcendental. And he quoted from very ancient, uh, authentic uh, literature, books, which explained perfectly that uh, who God was, and how we were made in the image of God. Uh, our body is temporary, whereas God's body is eternal. We are spirit soul, and God is no different from his body, whereas we are different from our body. All these concepts were very nicely explained by Prabhupada. Prabhupada had certain qualities which I have never seen in anyone else, and that is, besides being scholarly, extremely fond of the Lord, he had absolutely no uh, interest in material gains for himself. Everything for Krishna. That really shook me initially, because I had never met someone who was not selfish. This is a very great quality, that Prabhupada had not an iota of selfishness in him. Uh, there were times when uh, I would try to bargain with him, whether he would compromise, absolutely no. Prabhupada never compromised on his basic philosophy and the truthfulness. He was sticking absolutely to the right truthfulness. It was then that I realized that here was a person whom I could lay my 100% trust and faith in. Because up to that stage I had never met a person, whether it's a relative or friend or whoever, that I could trust 100%. And uh, this is a unique feature of Prabhupada, that he, one could trust him. I don't know why people uh, uh, took so much time in India. But uh, once Prabhupada got going, there was no stopping him. He's absolutely the uh, most wonderful person I've ever met. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever meet anyone like him. Well, <clears throat> Prabhupada, I discovered, was a, a real Sanskrit scholar. He was able to punctuate practically all of the, all that he said with, with uh, sentences from the sacred texts of India in a very remarkable way, bringing these out uh, in a way that was extremely fitting at the time. Uh, I was particularly impressed by this because I myself had, had studied Sanskrit for six long years in the university and wasn't able to do this at all, and uh, nor was I able to translate uh, Sanskrit in any way as fast as he did. Uh, he, also was, he also did a very important work, of course, in uh, translating so many of the texts that had never been translated before, introducing, you might say, to the Western world for the first time the, uh, the philosophy and the, devo the devotional philosophy, you might say, of uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. And uh, so this was, uh, I think, certainly very important. Not only did he introduce these texts, but he introduced them in a way that was it was quite different from the other translations that had been made. I had read so many different translations, for, ex for example, of the Bhagavad Gita, which had all been interpreted uh, from the, the impersonalist type of philosophy of the Advaita school. And here, you might say, for the first time was a truly devotional translation, a spiritual translation of the text, which I felt uh, really came much closer to the true meaning and the purpose of the Bhagavad Gita.